Good day, fellow investors. I'm here again today with Yao Kai Yang, and today we're going to discuss a very, very interesting Chinese stock, one stock that I have been covering for already six months now, and that Yao Kai has been buying lately because the stock price dropped. It's Beijing Capital Airport, so it's the airport in the capital of China. They are building a new one, but that's a very interesting story, and that's the reason why the stock price dropped. But Charlie Munger is invested in a Chinese airport because he says it's simply an airport. Uh, they are building a new one, but that will be it. And so you have a moat, you know people will fly uh, across uh, there and you know prices will go up. People will fly more and more as the years pass. So it's practically a great business, but we have to see now, okay, is it great value? What is the return we can expect? And where will this lead us in the future? Let me just show you what has been going on lately. So as you can see here, the price in American dollars uh, declined approximately 50% over the last year, year and a half from its peak. But over the last three years, it's, if you look at the bottoms, it's still close to where it was at bottomed in 2017 and during that crisis at the beginning of 2016. So from a low perspective, it's on its lows, but you can see when there is positivity, when there is improvements, it can really explode. So a very interesting stock from a business perspective, but also from a trading perspective for all the traders out there. When we look at revenues, they have been constantly increasing over the last 10 years. Uh, there have been some investments, they had some debt, they have repaid that debt, so it's practically closely to a debt-free company, uh, profitable company, but there have been two issues that happened during the year that really affected the stock price, and Yao Kai will tell you more about those issues. Yeah, so the first thing that happened was uh, CACC, I think the Chinese... Uh, uh, civil engineering board or something. These guys used to, so there used to be a fee attached to the ticket that used to be paid um, to the airports through a mechanism called like a, like a, they call it the uh, civil aviation fund or something. And earlier this, earlier that, last year, they decided for the publicly traded airports, they will no longer get that fee. So that would cut like 25% uh, of the aviation revenue from uh, Beijing airport um, going forward, like uh, starting... Uh, the end 19. of November 2018. Yeah. Yeah, 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 starting 19 is when they, that's gonna take effect. And the second thing that happened was they just, they announced that the the new airport the move to the new airport will begin by the end of 2019 and they will move um, China Eastern and China Southern's flights all to the new airport and those two account for about 40 percent of the passengers in Beijing Capital Airport so. It, all 40% of that is going to the new airport, which is called Daxin. And yeah, so that's the two things that really hammered down uh, the stock. And uh, it was trading basically at book uh, just a few days ago. So if we look now at how analysts change their perspective on this and what hammered the stock price, we here have a chart from DBS Bank estimations. And you can see how the number of flights expected number of flights declines from 1,750 in 2019 to 1,150 in 2021 where, when all the reallocation is finished and only from then on it increases again to 1,400. So let's say we have one, two, three, four years of declining uh, Num declining number of flights, which would really hammer aeronautical revenue and non-aeronautical revenue a little bit less because that's shopping and things like that. So with 
revenues going down so significantly, also the estimations for earnings changed. And in the model that I have built for myself a few months ago when I started the coverage of this stock, I estimated, okay, first we have a decline in revenues, but they, then I didn't estimate that so many new airlines, so many airlines will switch so quickly, but that's how things go in China. But now we have to add that hit to the estimation and another hit, and then we get to, okay, we can calculate what are the future cash flows. Usually 40% of that is paid out in dividends, which is okay. So you can expect the dividend yield from now what we are, 3%, that should go up to 4 4.8% then decline as the number of airlines decline and then go up again as traffic picks up over the next decade and then in the long term 5% and then it should grow at a steady rate of 4 or 5% as the industry grows. In any case, uh, a very conservative target price or entry price for me expecting a 15% business return on this one was 0 0.68 dollars and if i would be happy with a 10 percent return i would buy this at 0 0.9 dollars which is still above the current price but here i include a 30 percent currency drop uh, devaluation in china i include a recession in china on top of all of what has been going on which is unlikely to happen but i'm still always targeting okay what's my margin of safety what's my return without risk and i want it to be at 15 percent so that's something that really skews my perception but this is let's say the worst case scenario and yaokai will now talk about things that might improve this scenario and also that might be different from what other analysts are expecting so a um, couple of things is, even though 40% of the uh, passengers might get re relocated to Daxing, um, the, the, the ones that are staying, so uh, Air China and uh, Hainan Air are the ones that are operating the uh, international flights from Beijing capital airport. Uh, if you look at uh, China Southern and China Eastern, yeah, they have, they are, 40% uh, of the passengers, but um, most of their flights are short, shorter haul, a um, couple hours, and uh, very few are international. So with the international uh, passengers, first you charge them bigger fees. Uh, secondly, they are generally better off and they spend more money in the airport. So th the airport business works that you don't just take rent from the stores, you also take a revenue cut. So as the revenue of these um, stores uh, increase, they actually get a higher, higher uh, uh, revenue from these stores as well. And the next two things I wanna talk about is one is the, the distance. So the old airport is generally more desirable. The thing, is like 30 kilometers away from uh, Tiananmen Square, which is the heart of uh, the, the center, the dead center of, of Beijing. It's designed that way, in a sense. So the new one is 60 kilometers away. Right? So that makes a huge difference. If you wanna travel, you, if, and you had a choice, you probably would prefer the old airport. Um, so that's one thing. The second thing is, this is a bargain, even uh, in, in a comparative basis, even in China. So some of the other established airports are selling at uh, about 10 to, um, 10 to 25 PE, um, quite a bit above book. And the new airport that's built has an investment of 800, sorry, 8, uh, 80, 80, sorry, 80 billion yuan. Uh, Chinese yuan, and this old one has an enterprise value when I bought it of 27 uh, billion Hong Kong dollars, which is cheaper than Chinese yuan. So that translates to probably something like 24 billion Chinese yuan, 
and they have the same design capacity and the old airport is also closer to the city center and so comparatively i'm getting a pretty big discount i'm getting like more than 50 percent discount for something that's arguably better and i like that as well and in the end i also have some I irrational uh likes for airports i i somehow just like airports um that's but that's that's more emotional than than analytical but what we can say is okay beijing airport is an airport there it will be used for the next 50 years for sure yeah. Yeah. and one very important thing with chinese stocks especially these kind of local monopolies this is no concession uh, if no. you look at toll roads uh, railways there is always a concession expires in 10 years or 20 years and then ciao ragazzi but this one uh, it has practically constantly its business and doesn't have to worry about any concessions and and it shows it shows for these guys what they do is they just pay down debt and pay dividend and for some of the uh toll roads uh they started buying random stuff like uh some goes into real estate development which is a favorite for chi all the chinese companies to diversify into and then they also buy some um uh what you call these things um securities companies brokerages so they would buy some brokerage firms as well so uh, so it shows because of the concession expiring there is a pressure on capital allocation uh, for these toll roads but there isn't for these airports the airports are fairly focused on uh, their main business and that should lead to more dividends in the future uh, yeah. what, uh, what do you say about uh, the news came in, coming out in July when Beijing Capital Airport uh, paid $678 million to purchase GTC property? So the there, there is a bit of a, yeah, I think it's a bit of a, a self-dealing because the, the uh, so that's a risk you have to keep in mind. And um, this company is owned by the parent company which is the beijing capital group or something right so the the parent company also owns the new airport so it is possible there will be some um uh some self de self dealing in there and that's something you have to keep in mind in china it's going to happen um, but generally they don't do it too excessively um mainly like in china there's a saying that you shouldn't eat the the you should have some eating manners right so so you don't basically don't be too egregious with with all the crap you do so that is uh, <laughs> um there is a limit to that but uh, it it is a it is a thing you have to keep in mind it will um happen from time to time but don't because expect because when we think about it, uh, the investment cycle is over. I think they have some capex for 2019. Yeah, they don't have much. And uh, then they are done. So they could practically pay out 80% yeah. of the dividends. Yeah. And that would lead the dividend yield in five to 10 years Six. to be 10%. 10 yeah. But do you think they will pay a 10% dividend or they will invest 5% perhaps in the new airport through a capital it is possible it is possible um so so always keep in mind it is possible i i, I can see that possibility it's not a non-zero possibility but still then we still should think okay it's still investing in the, the same new airport is a shit so it's it's okay yeah, yeah it, so they are still investing in the new airport still same industry yeah. still industry that has a moat in beijing because there will not be a third airport I mean, even if if there is, it basically means that there will, there is a capacity constraint because the, this thing has been under capacity constraint for like three four years. It was designed for something like eighty something million passengers per year. It was running at hundred for the past five years or something, and it kind of makes sense because if you look at, you know, you could compare Beijing to New York both in terms of. Um, population or or the importance in uh, in commerce um new york has three airports are both 
I mean, all three of them are, are practically maxed out. Um, and it carries something like 300, 270 million passengers per year, something like that. I, I, I'm, I'm pulling the number out of my memory. Beijing airport at the moment does 100, right? And then it doesn't have to serve just itself. Uh, there are two other cities that will rely on Beijing for the long haul international flights. And that is Tianjin and, and Shijiazhuang. So those are fairly sizable cities. So you have a very similar situation to the tri-state area. You don't, the, the New York uh, airport doesn't just serve New York. It serves also, you know, some of the Connecticut people and then also the uh, uh, New Jersey people. So, so you have that going on there. So I, even if they build a third airport, I won't be too worried about it. But that will take decades. They feel st st they first have to finish the first one, the second one, and then yeah. finish it, which will take seven years for all the runways. Yeah. So, and the capacity, the traffic is expected to constantly grow as air flight develops inland and offshore uh, for all the countries and everything. So uh, we are now, let's summarize a little bit. We are talking about a good durable competitive advantage investment that I don't think you can lose money and uh, I think Charlie Munger says when he bought an airport in uh, China I think he bought Shanghai airport oh but... that's that's the that's the crown jewel okay so he bought that one and he says it had no debt you cannot lose with debt so that's the first rule of investing and you get a dividend now of what three percent four percent something because that thing sells and his cost probably much lower. The okay, Shanghai but, Airport, it is, it's trading at 25 PE, I think. It goes at three something, I think. But, not, but this one, the Beijing Capital Airport has a dividend yield of? Three something, three oh three. Something. Yeah. It might decline if revenue a decline a little bit, but then it should again pick up in the future. So you can expect a recurring stream of dividends for the very, very long term. And very unlikely that it goes bust in any case so and there is always they are deploying half of that capital again into some new investments like what they bought recently that should allow for higher profits and uh, things like that so you can't practically go wrong with this investment from this perspective what is the reason you are buying this except for your thing that you love airports um well it, it, it's i'm getting it's it's um I'm getting it at book, right? You're getting an airport at book value. It just the thought of that makes me excited. <laughs> and am I getting? I'm also getting it at a, a like sixty percent uh, relative discount to the new airport for something better. So the deal hunting aspect of me also can't resist this. So and there is always the fact if this uh, stabilizes or if earnings or revenues don't drop 40% as expected, but those drop 25%, then we can expect a revaluation and then we can expect this thing to have a similar valuation to the Shanghai airport, which is at 25, which means yep. that the stock price will go from 0 0.9 now to 2 point something. Yeah, 2.3, 2.4, 2.3, so, and that's something extremely possible over the next five to 10 years, surely as soon as it is priced as an airport in the world. There is always the risk in Ch of Chinese regulatory things and things like that. But sooner or later, people forget about it and the stock shoots up like it did a year and a half ago when practically everything that happened was known. Known, yeah. Everybody knew about the new airport. The new airport isn't something that came out yesterday. They've been, I mean, you don't take it, it doesn't take a day, right? They started building it started planning it in like 2002 or something, started building it a couple of years ago, like three, three years ago. But right? that's and always it, the myopic market. They always wait for the news to come out before implementing uh, into the models. And they call me crazy for always talking about the risks, risks, risks. But uh, let me first yeah. add all the risks to my calculation and then sooner or later- And then everything left is upside. Yes. So yeah. I still think that maybe with a slowdown, global slowdown or something like that, 
you can get this cheaper, especially if there is more turmoil in China or things like that. But we are already dealing at such a low that it might happen, but it might not happen. So if somebody wants to enter this in stages, it's definitely a good point to enter like you are doing. And if it yeah, goes lower, the, it could be, you know, for the next three years, the stock doesn't go anywhere, but the, the, the value of this property will just keep going up. Uh, and it, it will be a perfect period of time to accumulate shares and, you know, there might be other drops, Trump tweets again and Beijing airport drops, and then you can get it at even cheaper prices. All right. So very interesting story. Very interesting stock uh, for our viewers. Uh, so something to watch, uh, learn more about, of course, do your own due diligence as always, and then see how that fits your portfolio. Thank you, Yao Kai, for sharing your knowledge. As would uh, Munger says, Munger says that he has a very young uh, Chinese that speaks Chinese and English, and that's always a great asset when investing in China. I'm a Chinese that speaks English and Chinese, but uh, not sure about very young. <laughs> no longer very young. <laughs> come on, come on. All right. Thank everybody for watching and we'll see uh, each other in next videos. Don't forget to check Yao Kai's YouTube channel, Invest with JY Kai, with a lot of videos about such investing gems as is Beijing Capital Airport that we discussed now. Thank you. See you guys.